Hallelujah. Amen. How many are excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Isn't God so wonderful? Everybody say, this is my day. Say, this is my time. Say, God's going to speak to me today. I'm going to get a revelation. I'm going to get an impartation. <laughs> Amen. My eyes are going to open up. I'm going to see truth. <laughs> no truth. Right. And the truth's going to set you free. Amen. Now, how many are excited for the truth, right? That the word of God is uh, uncorruptible. It's powerful. It's living. Amen. And it's able to do what it says to do. Right. So we're going to get it today. So let's release our faith this morning. Say, Father God, this is my day. This is my hour. I thank you for the Holy Ghost that you lead me into truth, that you teach me, that you show me things. Lord, whatever I need to hear today, not, not what I want to hear, but what I need to hear, speak to me deeply today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen and amen. All righty, everybody say, don't be a suppressive. And this is number two. So if you weren't here last week, I would strongly encourage you to get, uh, go online or get a CD and listen to that teaching because I believe it was really powerful. I believe the Lord wants to help us. And I felt led to continue along these lines here a little bit. And uh, we're going to see God do some great things. And one of the things that we talked about, we, we kind of got more into when you release and when to resist because it, it, this will make more sense as we go further. But uh, let's just get right into the word. Let's get see this here in, in, in God's perspective. Let's go to 3 John, the first chapter, verse number 2, it's, and we'll just get right into the Word. How many love the Word? How many love the Word? Isn't it great? We are so blessed. Everybody say, I am blessed. Say, above blessed. Amen? Beyond blessed. All right. Notice what it says here in John, the first chapter here. It says, Beloved, I wish above all else. Everybody say, above all else that thou mayest what? Prosper. prosper. Everybody say prosper. prosper. And be in what? Yeah. Health, even as your what? Soul. As your soul prospers. And uh, we, we started talking last week, we started to share with you that it says, you know, God wants us to prosper. And the word prosper means to get help along the way. It means to succeed in reaching. How many of God wants to do that in our life, right? Yeah. And he says, I wish above all else that you'd be in health. How many know God wants us to be in health? Yeah. Everybody say, be in health, right? Yeah. That means to be well, right? Yeah. And he said, but notice here, the clarifying statement is this. He said, even as your soul prospers. In other words, to the degree that your soul is prospering, he's saying that that's the, to, to the degree that you're going to prosper and that you're going to be in health. Notice this definition here. I want you to see it. Slide number four. How many love the word? Amen. He said, even as your soul prospers, the word for even as is to the, to, 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 is, as your soul, in other words, you're not going to prosper and be in health beyond your soul prospering. You can just see that there. It's to the degree, right? To the fact. It's that, that's a fact. The word soul is psyche, right? That's the Greek word. And it's the breath of life, the vital force, right, that emanates the body, shows itself in breathing, moral intellect. But the simple definition is your soul is the seat of the will, it's the emotional self. It's the very aspects of self. It's the seat of desire. It's the, the seat of feeling, right? It's the seat of affection. That's your soul. And so it says here that you and I are going to prosper as our soul. So a lot of times we teach, and I teach it strongly, is, you know, if you want to prosper, you've got to renew your mind because that's your soul, right? You've got to start thinking differently, right? And we know that's a big key in order to prosper. You start thinking different. You start thinking God's way. But also, as I started to think along these lines here, it, a part of your soul is your emotional self. Uh, uh, it's the seed of desire. It's a seed of feelings, right? Affection. But emotion. Everybody say emotion. And the fact of the matter is that your emotions and my emotions, right, uh, can prosper. Meaning that we can deal with things differently and not emote or have the same emotions toward things, right, that we would have before. So our soul can prosper. How we feel, right? How we, uh, again, I don't want, I'm a faith person, so I don't want you to go thinking, what is he talking about here? But I truly believe that there's a part of us not only renewing your mind, but God wants to heal your emotions. He does. And people say, well, I just don't believe that, you know, bless God, you know. No, there is a difference between your soul and your spirit. 
When you and I get saved, your spirit gets saved. Completely, totally, entirely. We talked about it in our class today. When you received the breath of life, right? That, that, that part of your nature, you got the life of God. Your spirit changed. It went from death to life. But your physical body, unless there was a supernatural healing when you got saved, if you came up limping, nine times out of ten, you're going to go to your seat limping. Why? Maybe, again, until you learn and understand that God wants your soul, your, your body to be well, right? right? I mean, God wants our bodies to be well. So you, you learn how to, how, to, how to get healing for your body, right? If you had a cold when you got saved and you're going, you know, and you might, you know, I've seen it, but there are times you just walk out, you're, <coughs> I received Jesus and you're still physically, you're still physically uh, not well. The same is true with your soul. And, and, and again, this is a part, and that's why we call this message, don't be as suppressive, is that we try to ignore that part of us. We don't want to deal with it. And the reason we don't want to deal with it, it could get a little ugly. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so your soul and my soul, notice what it says over here in the book of James, the first chapter, verse 21, your soul and my soul, it needs healing. Right? right? And the word says, you and I are going to prosper to the degree that our soul is prospering. Right. How many have already seen it that since you've been a Christian, you're start, you're, 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 it's, it's affecting how you feel about things. Yes. It's affecting how you react to things, right? Yep. Right? Notice what it says here. Wherefore lay apart all superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, it's talking about God's word, which is able to save your soul. Amen. He's not talking about your spirit here. He's talking about your soul. Your soul needs saving. Yeah. Notice the word for soul, a uh, save here, slide number five. How many love the word? Amen. Your soul. And you sh we shouldn't be afraid of this. Amen. We shouldn't ignore it. Amen. You guys with me today. Some of you are like, well, Pastor Mike, we, we, we appreciated you last week being Dr. Phil, but we don't want to hear any more about this today. <laughs> and I'm not trying, guys. I love you guys. I'm just trying to help you. And again, you can throw all this out, right? But there's truth here. He says, he goes, he goes, it received with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. The word save is the word zozo. That's the same word that's found over in the, uh, in the book of, of the Gospels when, when Jesus said, be thou made whole, be, be whole. It's talking about to heal, to make whole, to deliver, to rescue. Are there souls that need rescuing? Yes. Yes. Healings. Yes. Everybody say healings. healings. Notice what it says here. I want you to see this. Uh, this is over in the book of First Thess uh, Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verse number 23. How many love the word? Amen. And so the word, I'm about to say the word, the word, is able to save and to heal your soul. Can God heal your emotions? Yes. Notice what it says here. It says, in the very God of peace, sanctify, everybody say sanctify. sanctify. You what? Holy. holy. In other words, uh, the word holy is slide number 33. I want you to see it. It's holotelos. <laughs> Again, I'm not saying it right. Uh, slide 33. And it's, it's, it means complete in all respects, absolutely perfect through and through. Yeah. So when it says God sanctify you holy, that word whole, talis, right? That's where we get holistic, whole. Do you believe, and I, I believe it to believe, God not only wants to save and heal your spirit, may give you life in your spirit, but he wants to heal your body and he wants to heal your soul. Amen. Are you guys hearing? Look at that scripture in the Amplified cast. How many love the word? How many love the word? All right. He said, the very God, and the Amplified said, and may the God of peace himself sanctify you through how many are ready to let God go through and through, yes. separate you from profane things, make you pure, holy, consecrate to God, and make your spirit, your soul, your body be preserved sound, yes. complete, found blameless, blameless, right? And it's coming. Look at that in the message Bible, my dear friend. How many love the word? Are we getting it today? Yeah. Everybody says, I'm getting it. The message Bible says, may God himself, the God who makes everything whole, holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put you together. 
Spirit. How many need to be put together? Some <laughs> <laughs> right? Soul, right? <laughs> Spirit, soul, and body. And keep you fit, keep you healthy, keep you strong yes. for the coming of the, our master in, in Christ. Yes. All right. So look over here. Let's go to Romans, uh, Hebrews, the fourth chapter. The fourth chapter. Uh, verse number 12. I mean, love the word. Isn't it great? Amen. So soul, soul, the soul, soul. Notice what it says here, guys. I want you to see it. It says this. It says, the word of God is what? Quick. quick. Everybody say quick. quick. That word means to be living. It means to be alive, right? Uh, powerful. Everybody say powerful. powerful. Right? That means God's word can produce anything, right? Whatever, whatever you and I need, right? It's, uh, it's sharper than a two-edged sword. God's word is so sharp. But notice what it does. It's, it's, it's the dividing of asunder of what? Soul and spirit. Soul and what? Is there a difference between your soul and my soul? Yes. My spirit and your soul? There, there's a, this, your spirit and your soul, they're, they're, they're parts of the inner man, but your soul and your spirit are not the same. Right. And it says the word of God is able to divide us under the soul and the spirit. But notice what else the word of God says it is. It is a discerner of what? The thoughts and what? The intents of what? The hearts. Notice what the word of God does. Look at the slide number six. So this, this is why it happens. When you and I are hearing the word, it is so powerful. It ministers to us on a holistic level. In other words, it's so powerful. It's so complete. And this word that you and I are hearing, it's so powerful. It, it'll literally go and it'll start going right there. It goes right there, the discerner, right? Skilled judging, right? It's, it's able to recognize, right? It's a discerner of the thoughts. Uh, slide number seven. Everybody say thoughts. Thoughts. The word thoughts and intents, meaning thinking, consideration, reflection, ideas, right? Deliberation, intents, your mind, manner of feeling, the act of thinking, consideration. Again, you're seeing. So the, when you're under the word and you're with the Lord, there's, what's going to happen? The spirit of God's going to start ministering to you on a very deep level. Yes. Like last week, Sunday, when we had our, our teaching, I am confident that people went, whoa, there's something got brought up, you know? <laughs> you know, when we are here, and again, I encourage you to listen to the message, and we'll kind of go over a little bit. You're, something kind of came up to you. Maybe there was an experience, or maybe there was something that happened, and you're like, oh, oh, something that affected your soul. So you have a choice at that time. You can either ignore it and become a suppressive. Notice what a suppressive person is, <laughs> slide number uh, eight. Tell me love the word. Amen. You can ignore it. You can ignore it. The word, God's, what, what's God trying to do? He's trying to help you. But, but sometimes what people do, when God's, the word's going forth and the spirit of God's ministering to you, he wants to minister to your body. He wants to minister to your spirit. He's minister to your soul. Things will start, he's a discerner of the thoughts and the intent. Things will start coming up. Nice. Think, think, we're, we're in God's therapy. Things will start getting stirred up in your spirit. Mm -hmm. And so what happens a lot of times is people, some, not you guys, of course, but a suppressive individual may consciously or unconsciously choose to avoid experiencing certain emotions. In other words, like, no, I'm not going to feel that. Right? Because they believe they're unable to handle it, deal with it right. In doing so, what they do, this is, the, this is the bad part, what they do is they push these emotions deep, deep inside, right? Right? And your emotions, they, what happens, they build up, and sooner or later, they're going to explode. This is, this is truth. And we talked about the analogy of a, of a beach ball, you know. You're in the pool and you try to push that ball underground, under the water, and you go, I got it. But, you know, you know it doesn't want to stay there. This is what people do with their emotions or their feelings. They keep pushing it down. They ignore it. And then sooner or later, that beach ball is coming up. And it's not coming up in the same place you pushed it under. Some of you, you're sitting there, you know, you're, you're talking to your wife, you know, everything's good. And all of a sudden it's like, whoa, where'd that come from? <laughs> where'd that come from? <laughs> Again, I'm not Dr. Phil, I'm just trying. It's sometimes, yeah, it could be a momentary thing that it's something emotes and a feeling. But sometimes people have oppressed things to such a degree in their soul. They never released it to God. Yeah. And by doing so, it'll come up. All of a sudden, you're frustrated. You're angry. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys hearing me? Yeah. 
And so what you and I want to do, and again, go back to the first side, Cass. Put it up, my dear sister. And this is a great way to teach your kids. Get it out, give it to the Lord, and let it go. Right? And resist it, right? So a suppressive individual, you need to know when to release it to the Lord. Right. Now, if you weren't here last week, I'd encourage you strongly to listen to it. We talked about Hannah. Remember the story of Hannah? And she was, year after year, this other woman was berating her. She couldn't have any kids. Remember that? Year after year, year after year. And you, we broke all the definitions. She, she was in anguish. She was depressed. But she was unfruitful. Nothing was happening. Finally, she went to the priest. She, she poured out her soul yeah. Yeah. to the Lord. The word unto means you're, you're pouring it out not to hear. We're not dumping on an individual. You're pouring out your soul to God. You're pouring out that emotion to God. Are you hearing me? And she did. And the high priest looked at her and said, hey, you're a drunk woman. Why don't you go home and put that bottle away? She goes, no, no, I'm not drunk. I poured out my soul. I poured out the emotion. I poured out that feeling to God. I gave it to God. And then he turned around and said to her, go in peace, go in shalom, go in the completeness of God. Yes. And she believed that. And she went her way. Mm -hmm. And she was no more sad. Why? Because she poured that emotion out. She went home. She had relations with her husband. She got pregnant. But let me ask you a question. When she went home, did that other woman stop harassing her? No. Was the problem still there? Yes. yes. But she made a choice to resist it. Yes. 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 Are you hearing me today? Amen. There comes a time when you guys, and we saw that, we, we brought you over to the book of, uh, when we talked to the psalmist, remember, the, he, said, he said, I poured out my soul to God. And he, said, he goes, why am I cast down my soul? Why are you? He goes, believe in God. So you have to release it. Yes. And so when there's times when you're here or you're, and God's bringing something up, do not be a suppressive person. Don't, go, don't ignore it. Why? Your health and your prosperity is connected to your soul prospering. Yes. Yes. That's good. Yeah. Good and I know like a lot of people say, I don't want to think about that experience no more. No, 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 no. Listen, we're not talking about regurgitating it. See, that's the difference. Right? right? You give it to God. Okay, put that first slide up. <laughs> yes, he's awesome. You put that, you give it to God and then you get in faith. You don't keep regurgitating the problem. Right. You gave it to the Lord. Yeah. Yep. You let it go. And when, God, when something comes up, don't push it down. Don't go, don't ignore it. it it's funny, like last week I, I got home from church and I'm just laying on the couch and I'm praying because I, you know, I, I'm going to apply this word to my life. And I started going, okay, Lord, <laughs> is there anything in my soul? Is there something that I'm not seeing? And would you know it? <laughs> the, the Holy Spirit reminded me of something that happened when I was in fifth grade. You're like, well, that's crazy, Pastor Michael. Ain't you a new creation? Old things are passed away. Yeah, old things are passed away in my spirit, but my soul. That's right. yeah. And so what did I need to do? I said, Lord, I'm just giving you that feeling. I'm giving you that emotion. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord God, for restoring my soul. Yes. Hallelujah. I guess you hear me. Hallelujah. Don't be, everybody say, don't be. Don't be, don't be a suppressive. Don't be a suppressive. Everybody say, not me. Not me. In Jesus' name. All right. Well, um, I want to give you two more examples of that, okay? Is that okay? Now look at uh, 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, and verse number four. How many remember the story of Elijah, right? Amen. <laughs> Elijah, right? He comes on the scene, he's wearing camel skins, and he's just a, he's a rugged guy. Elijah, Elijah was a rugged, he was the hunter and fisher, big, burly, strong guy, right? If Elijah was alive today, he'd be going to Bass Pro Shops, right? Those kind of <laughs> <laughs> Right, right? He's, he's a man's man. Elijah was a man's man. I mean, he goes before the, he goes before the king and says, hey, it's not going to rain, but according to my word. Yeah. It didn't rain for three and a half years. Then the Lord tells him, go out there now, find Ahab. Get all the prophets of God, or the uh, prophets of Baal, and then we're going to have a, we remember the story, right? He had a, the, Elijah says, well, we'll see. If you, you're believing in all those false prophets, I believe in Jehovah. He goes, let the God who answers by fire be God. And so they had a big contest. 
And so they built an altar, all these false prophets, and they called down their God, and no fire came down. And Elijah said, hey, it's my turn now. He built an altar. He restored and repaired the altar of God. Powerful man of God. Powerful man of God. He built an altar, right? And he, uh, he, uh, he, he, says, he says, pour water. He, he wants to make it even more challenging. Pour water on the, on the offerings. And they poured gallons of water, saturated the wood. And he, he called on the name of the Lord, and fire came down. Yeah. The glory came down. Ooh. Elijah's the man. Right? Yeah. This is powerful. He kills all the false prophets. It's a great day of revival in Israel. But all of a sudden, again, for the sake of time, we don't read it read here. His, the king's wife, Ahab's wife, was Jezebel. And she found out that he killed all those prophets. And she said, she said, you get a message of that old boy. You tell him, he, he's going to be like one of my dead prophets. I'm going to kill him. And this man that was powerful, strong, full of vigor, bold, he said, I'm getting out of here. And he ran for his life. And he, he leaves his servant. He's all by himself. And he comes, we come here. He's, he wanted, he's running so fast. He's in the wilderness. He's running far from his place of victory. And he came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested himself that he might die. Is this a depressed person? Yes. Hey, just, just a day. He's, he's almost like bipolar in the spirit. A day ago, he's on the mountain. I'm on top of the world looking down on creation. And now he says, Lord, I want to die. I want to die. It's enough. Everybody say, it's enough. It's enough. He goes, it's enough. He says, he, Lord, he, said, he says, Lord, take my life. Now what's he throwing in here now? I'm not any better than my dad. <laughs> Are you guys hearing that? He goes, he goes, for I'm not better than my father. Look at that scripture in the New Living Translation. What's happening here? What's happening to him? Something's going on in his soul. And he's starting to think back about his childhood, looking up at his dad. And maybe one time, maybe he was competing with his father, wanted to be better. And he's like, and obviously he wanted to be better than his dad. Why would you even say such a thing? No, take my, I'm not any better than my ancestors. I'm just a dud. Look at the new living. He says, he says he went alone in the desert, traveling all day. He sat down uh, in a solitary room under a tree, right? And prayed that he might die. He said, I have had enough. <laughs> he said, take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Is this guy right at the end of his rope? Yeah. He said, I've had, a, I've had enough. Look at that in the message Bible, my dear friend. How many love the word? And the message says, like, and he went into the desert. He came to a low in the bush, right? He claps, he claps in the shed. Wait, wanting in the worst way to be done with it all. To just die. Enough of this. Enough of what? Take my life. I'm ready to join my hands. Is this guy got issues going on here? So, but, 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 before we beat him up too hard, he's not being a suppressive. He's talking to the Lord here. Are you seeing this? He, he's, he's being real with God here. As much as we don't like what he's saying, as much as we don't like it, he wants to quit, he's had enough, he wants to die, but at least he's talking to God. Pouring it out to God. I'm at my wit's end. I'm done. I've had enough. He's, he's not suppressing it. He's not ignoring it. <laughs> now, Cass, go to, go to verse number 19. Just for, uh, verse number 9. Verse 9. We'll, go, we'll start there. How many love the word? So verse 9. So, so what does he do? He, he runs. He goes a little farther. He goes into a cave, and he, he's lodging there. That word lodge means he was taking up residence. He's ready to shut himself off from everybody. He's ready to quit. <laughs> ready to give up. Yeah. <laughs> Are you guys hearing this? Yeah. You, you, ever have, you ever have people? You ever know people? Or maybe you've ever felt that way. Where you just feel like, I'm at the end of my rope. I'm done, you know? I mean, you don't have to say it out loud to, to, to me. You don't have to, we're not going to have a, I'm, a, I'm at the end of my rope service here. <laughs> but some of you might have felt that before. Right. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm ready. 
right? Right? And, and so, so in, not only that, what's the first thing he's trying to do? He's trying to hide himself in a cave, right? He goes, and so, but how many are glad that as soon as you open up your heart to God, like he did there in verse number whatever, four, right? He poured it out. He said, God, I, I just can't take this no more. How many know God is merciful? God wants to help you. God wants to reach out to you. God will continue and keep the line of communication open. Yes. And he goes into the cave and the word of the Lord came to him and said, what are you doing here? How many know God's got something better for you than isolating yourself in a cave, cutting everybody off, yes. wanting to die? Yes. And then, you know, you, some of you are like, well, I've never felt that. There are, there are people that have felt this way before. Yes. Okay? And something we don't want to talk about because it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of bloody. And, and, and this is why in a service like this, you can just smile and go, but when you get in that car and you get along with the Lord, you apply what I'm talking about. You don't, you know, unless you want to do it right now, go ahead, you just get it out. Go, go, come on, baby, give it out to the Lord. That's what God's going to do. Come on, get it all out. Yeah. Right? So God says, what, do you, what are you doing here, Elijah? Verse number 10. And uh, he said, I, he said I, I've been jealous. What's, he's still talking to the Lord now. Yeah. Right? He said, I, I've been talking. He said, Lord, I've been jealous for you. Uh, but your people, they, they torn down the covenant. They thrown down the altars. They slain the prophets. And, and they're, they're, they're seeking my life, Lord. And uh, they're ready to take it away. And look at verse 11. He says, uh, so what does the Lord tell them to do? Get out of that cave. Yeah. See, now this is where, when you give it to God, the next few steps are you have to do what God tells you to do. Yeah. This is where a lot of people, they don't do what Hannah did. Hannah believed that word, go in peace, and guess what? She accepted it, put on a happy face, yeah. right? She got, she, then she became fruit, fertile, right? And man, baby was coming. Within a year, Samuel was coming, right? Yeah. When God starts to talk to you and starts telling what to do, and in this case, he's telling them, first thing, get out of this cave. <laughs> And then he says, behold, the Lord, he says, uh, and behold, the Lord passed by and a great strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rock before the, 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 rock, the Lord. But notice what it goes on to say. The Lord wasn't in the wind. Yeah. And, and, and as I'm talking this morning, it felt like the Lord just kind of just showed me something. <laughs> you see, Elijah, his ministry was bang, boom, pow. I mean, he goes in front of the king, no water. And then God says, Elijah, go down to the brook. I've commanded the ravens to feed you there. And he goes down to the brook, and, and it's all power. Yeah. It's like, like big experiences. And then he, God says, go there. We're gonna, it's going to rain. And, and, it's, and the, the, the story I just showed you, he, he, he's full of power. He's hearing God strong. It's like a yeah, thunder shaking move of God. God. His experience with God was so experiential. <laughs> So what's God doing to him now? He says, here he is. Oh, I've had enough. I want to die. He runs to a cave. I don't want to see nobody. But how many know you can shut everybody else off, but you can't shut God out. He's there. You can make your bed in hell. He's there. He doesn't leave you. He doesn't forsake you. You can't run from God. Sorry, I got a baby in the house. They're like, they're, she's still sleeping. <laughs> it's happy shouting. <laughs> it's happy shouting, happy shouting. You can't hide. And so what's happening? So, so what, what's, what's, what's happening here? First thing God said, go out there. The wind comes. God's not in it. God wasn't in the wind. And then there was, a, there was an earthquake. Another dramatic thing. Isn't that, isn't that what we all would like to have experience in our life? We would just love for God to shake things and blow things. But God wasn't in the earthquake. Nope. Look at verse number 12. And after the earthquake, there was, there, there, uh, there was a fire. Look at all the experience. There's wind, there's, there's shaking, there's baking, right? right? Fire. Oh, this, this, is, this would be a, a great church service, wouldn't it? We, we, how many would like to go to church service? The wind, the shaking, the fire. We'd be like, yeah, that's Holy Ghost Pentecostal Church. Man, that's awesome. Feeling, feeling, baby. I'm feeling it. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> And God's not there. But then after, what they, there was a, a still small voice. Yes. See, 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 
See, it all started. His healing started on the road when he got real with God. Yes. And that he was willing to go out there on the hill. Go, okay, Elijah, we're going to train you. We're going to teach you something. Go out there. Go out. You know, I've been, I've been teaching you a certain way. You've been used to this whole bing, bang, boom. You go out there, fire, earthquake, boom, nothing. And all of a sudden, deep inside, he hears, wait a minute. There it is. There it is. Still, it's, it's almost, it's almost, you got to strain your ear to hear. Wait, wait, I got to get quiet. Uh, be still, be still, be still. Be, yeah, oh, there it is. Yeah, there I'm here. Yeah, he's hearing God. See, sometimes we're trying to get our answer and it's with looking here. But the Bible says counsel in the heart of man is like deep water and a man of understanding draws it out. He says, there's this, let's keep going. There's some more to this. You guys doing good? Yeah. I'm doing good. <laughs> yeah. And after the earthquake, a, a still small voice, look at verse 13. And it was so when Elijah heard it. How many are glad? See, this, this, these are all keys. These are all keys. He poured it out to the Lord. Now he's, he's, he's cooperating with God. He's hearing it. And, and so he, he goes, oh, he reckoned, well, that God's talking to me now. He gets respectful now. Gets weary. And, he, and, he, and he stood in the entry of the cave and behold, the voice came to him and said, he said, e Elijah, isn't God so cool? He goes, what are you doing here? You're my guy. Yeah. You're my man. Yeah. You're my representative on the earth. Right. You, got, you got something to give. You got something to share. You got a story to tell. Mm -hmm. that can, that's your story too. And he said, what, what, why are you closing yourself off? Why are you in this cave? Why are you shutting down? What are you doing in this cave? What? And God knew it. Right. But what's God trying to get him to do? Look at verse number 14. Thank you, Bear. He said, he goes, he said, what's he doing? He said, man, I, he starts telling his story. I, I've been jealous for the Lord. Because the children of Israel, they've forsaken your covenant. <laughs> they've thrown down your altars. They've slain the prophets <laughs> with the sword. And he said, he goes, man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I got, I, I'm the only one left. And, and they seek my life. So what was he thinking? He's thinking, man, they killed everybody else. I'm the last one. I'm Israel's most wanted. I'm on their post office wall. This is, he's thinking in his mind, this is where his deception was. And how many know this is what happens? When you start yielding and going down that track, the devil will feed your lie. And he starts to believe, I'm the only one left. And everybody's coming for me. Now look at verse number 15. And the Lord said to him, what did the Lord tell him to do? Go return on the way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. Verse number 16. And Jehu, the son of Nishal, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. Does God got more plans for him? Yes. Does God got more plans for you? Yes. Yes. He said, man, and then you're going to anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat. The, 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 and he, he's going to be your prophet in your room. You got some, you got some training to do. Yes. Yep. Look at verse number 17. And it shall come to pass that he that escapes the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay, and him that escapes the sword of Jehu shall Elijah slay. Verse 18. Yet, then God corrects him. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. And look at verse number 19. And so Elijah said, No! I like my cave. I'm going to just stay here. I'm going to believe the lie. That's when you have to, after you re release it, it's time. Right? You got to start getting going. Just like that woman. She went her way. Can you see the principle here? Yep. But Hannah, he said, go, go your way. Go in Shalom. And she went her way. Right. See, you, once you, you pour it out, you get real with God, you give it to the Lord. Let him speak to you, and whatever he tells you to do, you start doing it. Yes. Are you guys hearing this? Amen. Can you guys handle another story? Yes. Got lots of time? <laughs> I'm speaking to the class. They already got me. We were in class. I, was supposed to, I thought I was, I was supposed to get out at 945, and in my brain while I'm talking about 
I got, I kept looking at the clock. Oh, I got, I got to 10. Because we were so into what we were talking about. I hope you guys were enjoying it as much as I was. And I'm like, I'm like, I got, I got, I got to, I got to 10 o'clock. I got, I got to 10. And then all of a sudden I look at her, or I think it was Desiree, or I think it was you. I go, what, what time is this class supposed to end? And, and I go, I got seven. She goes, no, no, you're supposed to be out of here a quarter of. <laughs> and I go, well, they're just going to have to wait for me. That's all. That's all it's going to be. Are you guys okay? So let me, let me just give you another, another story, okay? And uh, let, let the Lord, let the Lord, uh, let's just go to Genesis, the 16th chapter. And, and I want you... And again, please don't, don't take any of the condemnation or judgment from any of this, please, mm -hmm. right? And if, see, if the, as you're under the word, the word is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Know my heart. I'm not trying in any way to, oh, I've got to tell this for some, but no, just, just and, and you can just do this if you want, but don't receive any of the judgment. Just receive the love of God. Let God speak to you, and if God's ministering to you in a certain way, you know, you might go, well, I've got to talk to the Lord later. You know, I'm going to let it go. You gotta, right? It's okay. Because we want to help you. We, you're going to prosper, be in health, even as your soul. And, and you don't want to suppress these things, you know. And, you, and if you start opening your heart to the Lord, again, I'm not sitting there, you got to go back before you were in the womb, that kind of... But there are things that they might have hurt you, right, that you never released to the Lord, right? And, and it's good to let it go. And it's hindering you more than you think, okay? Again, you can take it or throw it out. So now Ab Sarah's Abram wife bear him no children. So this is Sarah, right? She, she was barren. And she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. Okay, look at verse number two. And so Sarah, right? Now, remember, they're, they're up in years, but Sarah was very healthy. Abraham was very healthy, and she was very beautiful. Sarah was a very beautiful woman, right? Now, God spoke to Abraham when he was 75, and at that time, Sarah was 65 years old. God said, you're going to be the father of a multitude. Abraham, as we're going to see, he did not have reproductive problems, Abraham, when it came to Abraham and Sarah having a baby, it wasn't Abraham that had the problem. Because he, and we're going to see in a moment, he can produce right here with Ishmael. And then after Sarah died, Abraham went on to have like five, six other kids. So he was producing well into his old age. This guy was going, right? He was having, right? So Sarah, she, there's a point in her life, she goes, she, she goes, she goes, behold now, Notice what she says. She says, the Lord, she, she's putting it off on the, she says, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. Right? And the word restrain, I want you to see it, slide number 24. She said, the Lord, the, the Lord, she's, 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 she's not doing any kind of, soul. there's nothing in, on her part. In other words, there's nothing her. Right? From this thing here, she goes to Abraham, she said, the Lord did this to me. The Lord shut up my womb. The Lord's refrained me. The Lord's held me back. It's not me. Now, this is very important because people that are suppressive sometimes, what they'll do, it's everybody else's fault, not mine. It's not happening. It's not because of me because I'm perfect. I walk on water. I multiply loaves and fishes. I call people. Are you getting this? So she says, the Lord has restrained me. Look at verse. Go back to the scripture, my dear sister. And she goes, I pray you, go into my handmaiden, right? Go into Hagar. That, 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 I, that I could have children through her. She'll be my surrogate mom, you know, and I'll have a baby through her. And so what did Abraham do? He hearkened to the voice of Sarai, right? So good possibility Hagar was a stunning looker. A good possibility Sarah was just so, at this point, you know, things that were radiating from her. Abraham was like, thank you. <laughs> right? So, but, but this is the sad part for Abraham because he didn't even pray about it, right? He didn't. He should have prayed at least, right? Oh, yeah. Should have asked the Lord, should I have done it? And how many think if he would have prayed, a lot of this Middle Eastern problems yeah. that we're having yeah. wouldn't have resulted right here, right? right. right. So he, he, just a little prayer, Lord, should I do it? Right. She's really fine and I'm tired of my wife. She's driving me, you know, she's always complaining and whining. Whatever. Yeah. Are you guys with me? Yeah. So Abraham, what did he, he hearken unto the voice, not of the Lord, of Sarah. Look at verse number three. And Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the, her maid, he took her, and Abram had dwelt 10 years in the land, and he gave her to her husband, and Abram to be his wife. And so verse number four, and he went into Hagar, and so that, and she conceived, right? She's, she's, now she's pregnant. And so when she saw that she had conceived, in other words, she's pregnant, her mistress was despised in her eyes. So like now, in the picture now, so Sarah, it's interesting, 
we're seeing she's creating more problems for herself. She, she thought she had a solution. She took matters into her own hand, right? And now this, this mistress is just looking down on her. She's like, I got pregnant. You never got pregnant. It's not the man's fault. It's you. You got a problem, okay? So look at verse number five. <laughs> and Sarah said to Abraham, my wrong be on me. <laughs> what, what is she saying here? My wrong be on you. I just did what you want me to do. He goes, I gave my handmaid into your bosom, and when she saw that I have conceived, I was despised in her eyes, and the Lord judged between me and you. <laughs> you can't be right for being wrong here. Right. This poor guy's like, she can't, he's hearing all the time, she can't have a baby. She's like, oh, 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 oh. here, take my handmaid, have a baby. And, uh, and he goes, okay, and he does what she, he hearkened to her, he's following her instructions, and then all of a sudden, after it happens, she goes, Now look at this, like, but I want, there's, the reason I'm saying this, there's an attitude here with Sarah, and, we're, and you gotta stay with me, I got a little bit more time, so I'm just, I can't, I can't jump out of the story now, okay, so you guys gotta stay with me. So look at slide number 25. <laughs> How many love the word? Amen. This is a, uh, common English Bible, this harassment is your fault, you are responsible for my suffering, <laughs> I'm being treated unfairly, and it's your fault. It's all your fault. That's, I'm, I'm suffering this abuse. What's happening here? She's taking no ownership right. for nada. Right. Right. Are you getting this picture? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's you, you. And the poor guy was just doing what he wanted her right, to do, right? He just, you told me to do it? Whatever, okay? Look at verse number six. You guys are doing great. I'm almost, we're getting there. And Abraham said to Sarah, he said, so Abraham finally gets a little manhood in him. He says to her, Behold, thy, this is your maid. She's in your hand. You do with her as you please. Yeah. You take care of the problem. Right. And so Sarah, being such a wonderful person, and Sarah, I know <laughs> we have a Sarah in the house, so please don't take any. <laughs> and Sarah, being such a wonderful person, she, she treated Hagar with such love. No, she dealt with her hardly to the point that this woman fled from her. Look at these other translations. Look at the uh, amplified version. How many love the word? Uh, see, see, this uh, handmaid, it's in your power. Do as you please. And when Sarah, what's, when, and when Sarah dealt severely with her, humbling, afflicting her, Hagar fled. Look at that in the, the Message Bible. Just go right to the Message. <laughs> message says it like this. says, you decide. What's Abram trying to do? Take ownership. Your maid is your business. And so what does Sarah do? I'm such a loving person. She abused Hagar to the point that this woman ran. Now, again, I'm not trying to pick on Sarah here this morning. I guess I am. I'm trying to bring light to it, right? <laughs> this woman, right, can you see? Yes. It, 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 she's not taking any ownership. Right. Nothing, zero. It's your fault. When she said she couldn't have a baby, she said, it's God. God's doing this to me. So there was no inner reflection. There's nothing there. And obviously, again, it wasn't Abraham's fault that they weren't reproducing. It was, it was hers, right? So let's just go to chapter 18. You guys still love Pastor? You all good? Yes. All right, so we're good. <laughs> Jackie, good to see a friendly face. <laughs> all right, <laughs> look, look at, um, let's go to, um, Cassie, let's go verse 9. So for the sake of time, I encourage you to read the rest of the story, beginning of the chapter. So this is when the Lord was coming with angels and, and they, they came to Abraham's place. Abraham saw him and so Abraham starts feeding him. You know, he's feeding the Lord. You know, he's blessing the Lord, you know. And so uh, Abraham just served, served the Lord. I, we, we there's great teaching from that. And, um, and so all of a sudden, while the Lord's there with Abraham, he, he, says, uh, he says, where's your wife, Sarah? And he said, uh, he said, she's in a tent. She's in the tent. Now look at verse number 10, guys. And so the Lord says to her, he says, he says now the Lord's speaking now. The Lord is speaking now. The Lord is speaking now. And the Lord, and she can hear it. And the Lord said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, your wife Sarah, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. So do you get the picture now, right? He's telling her, he said, 
The Lord's there and he says to Abraham, I know your wife, I'm telling you, next year, next year I'm visiting her and she's going to have a baby. It's coming. Baby's coming. Sarah hears this. Look at verse number 11. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well-stricken age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Look at verse number 12. Therefore, what did Sarah do? She laughed. She heard this, and she thought it was crazy. She laughed, saying, I'm waxed old. How shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being... How? She's like, she's almost 90 years old. She's like, how? In her mind, she was like, this can't happen. And she, she laughs. She laughs. Now remember, she's just outside the tent. The Lord's here. She hears the Lord, right? And she, she's, all this is going on in her mind, and she's laughing. <laughs> Look at verse number 13. And the Lord said unto Abraham, listen to these words, wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, shall I have surely bear a child which I am old? She thought it was crazy. There was no faith. She had no faith at all. There was not, she thought it was crazy. And the Lord said to Abraham, he said, why did Sarah, and isn't it cool how the Lord talks to us? He said, why did your wife laugh? Because he heard it. Right. Abraham, next year, and all of a sudden he was laughing in the tent. Look at verse 14. And he says, is there anything, to, and, and Sarah's hearing all this, is anything too hard for, he's, he's, he's saying, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Right. Any, uh, he, goes, and he goes, I'm telling you, next, I'm gonna, at the point in time, she's going to have a son. Sarah's going to have a son. Now look at verse number 15, guys. Then Sarah, what did she do? She what did Sarah do? She denied. she denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And she said, nay, but thou dost did laugh. Now let's look at this word here for deny. It says, cause like, so what's happening to Sarah now? Suppressives are liars. I'm great. I'm wonderful. Now there's a time to say that in faith. When you, get, when, you get, when you release it. But until you release it, give it to the Lord. Are you guys hearing me? The word denied means this. It means to deceive. It means to lie, to be untrue. But also look at the last part of that definition. It means to fail. It means to grow lean. Is it possible? In light of all the things I've shared with you. Is it possible? Sarah was not producing and not productive because she wasn't allowing her soul to prosper. You hear that? Yeah. But she, 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 she denied it. She said, no, not me, not me. No, no not me, not me. That's not me. She denied it. Let's look over here. I want you to go to Hebrews, the 11th chapter. How many are glad that God has mercy for all of us? Amen. How many are glad God has mercy for all of us? Amen. How many are excited that God's doing great things? We are getting it tonight. We are getting it tonight, or today, I should say, this morning. It feels like night. So, so notice this. Notice this now. Look at Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Let me see. Let me see. I have the scripture right here. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, I had, I had it written down. I think I must have. My faith eyes are going to. Maybe somebody can help me. It's the scripture there. By faith, Sarah received. <coughs> Where is it? I, my eyes must be getting tired. I'm rebuking it in Jesus' name. Can somebody help me? In the Cassie, where it says, By faith, Sarah herself. Receive strength. It's there in the 11th chapter. I don't know why. Oh, boy. <coughs> oh, thank you. There you go, 11. I'm, I'm, I'm just spinning my thing here going... Ugh. All right, so, so what, what happened here? It said, through faith also... Everybody say also. also. Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. 
and was delivered of child when she was past eight because she judged him faithful who had promised. What happened here? Something happened from the laughter and the denial in that tent. Maybe there was a conversation she had with her husband. Then she got along with God and she's like, and Abraham's probably telling her, honey, you got to get in faith. You got to believe yourself. You got you to trust God. And she had a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. And all of a sudden, she said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Herself, she received strength to conceive. She got in a miracle mode. What happened? I believe something happened after that laughter where it became obvious that she was denying herself to the Lord. And then she had a little talk with Jesus, Jehovah God. And something happened inside of her. And when something altered inside of her, all of a sudden she got to a place. What's happened here? She received strength to conceive. That's exactly what happened to Hannah. And that's exactly what will happen to you and me. If there's areas in your life that are not productive and fruitful, man, you go, if there's, if, you, if there's something God's bringing to you, you might think, well, this doesn't have anything to do with it, you know, <laughs> me denying or me being a bad person, be, treating this other person harshly and, you know, ragging on my, my husband over here and just blah, 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 blah. And we were like, well, how come, how come my life's a mess? And how come I'm not prospering? And how come I'm not in health? Yeah. Yeah. You, you, we think, well, this has nothing to do with it. No, it does have everything to do with it. Yes. Something happened there. Mm -hmm. And how many believe by the grace of God, something can happen to you and me. When you give it out and you give it to the Lord and you say, God, it's yours. Yeah. Yeah. And then you stop looking for, uh, 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 and you just get, set, get into the word and just listen. What is God saying to you? What's that still small voice inside of you saying to you? What is he telling you to do? Is he telling you to get out of your cave? Yeah. Start socializing. Stop being afraid. Stop running. Amen. Start being happy like Hannah did. Does it have anything to do with your dreams and my dreams coming true? Absolutely does. Yep. Beloved, I wish above all else that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul, yes. your emotions, your feeling, your mind, your renewing your thinking, right? It's all connected. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, this is like a hard one to stop. Good? Good? Should I get a little more? <laughs> I got lots more. I can stop. <laughs> I'm good. No, oh, let me just, what, just let me just make sure I'm, uh, there's more I got to share, but um, I hope the Lord lets me do it next week. It's so cool. Just in closing, guys, Psalms 23, 3. got to preach you happy. You're like, ah, 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 ah. How I many know, don't run from it. Right. Don't run, don't run. And, 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 and the key is, when you, and I encourage, if you weren't here last week, get this, get online, watch it, get the CD, we'll make a CD for you, you know, because we covered, you know, but it's tying in really good, it's tying in really good, and I'm, I'm excited about what God's doing I, in my own life, you know, it's, it's what God's doing, and, and, and what I want to encourage you guys is, you know, whether you're 15 years old or whether you're 90, God's still got purpose and plan for you. Don't, don't sit there and go, well, it's over for me. This is a young person's message. No, you know, it's time. Just well, let's get some healing here. Let's, yes. you know, we want to we wanna go full, full bore for the Lord. Yes. And sometimes, you know, maybe there's things you don't understand and I don't understand. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. You know, you can have those conversations with God. He, was, he will not be offended. Right. There's times you just go to the Lord. Lord, I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense to me. Everything I see is like, Swimming the wrong way, but, 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 Lord, and you got to come back. Say, Lord, I, I just know you're good. Yeah. And, and, and I know you got a purpose and you got a plan. And, and I, but, Lord, I'm giving this to you. And then as you do that and you're in faith and you're lining up your heart in faith, God will start showing you things. But if you're, but if you're constantly, you know, doing this, in darkness you see more darkness. In light you see more light. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But notice what it says in Psalms 23. It says, he restores my what? He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Somebody said, well, that's Old Testament. We just saw in the New Testament that the receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul, right? So, it's, it's, right, can you see it, guys? Again, you don't have to believe this if you don't want to, but I see it to be really true. He said, restores my soul. Notice the word for restore. I want you to see it. Slide number uh, 27. Hallelujah. 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 
the word restore means to turn back, to restore, to refresh, to repair, right? To recompense. In other words, to pay you back whatever you lost, to recover, to answer, right? How many like that? How many of God has an answer for your soul? Right? How many, some people are like, well, my, my soul seems dead. How many of God can restore it, refresh it, right? Repair it, right? Rec recover. He said, he restores my soul. Look at slide number 28. This is the word for soul in the Hebrew. It means your person, your appetite, your mind, right? Your desire, your emotion, your passion, the activity of the character. Has anybody ever needed a refreshing, right? A restoring of your emotion, your passion. <laughs> Look at slide number 29, guys. Bible and basically, he gives new life to my soul. The complete Jewish Bible says this, he restores my inner person. Amen. Some of you are like, well, Pastor Michael, this is a young man's message. No, it's not. No, it's not. You're here and there's breath in your body is because God wants you to see. He said, I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. There's things, there's purpose, there's plan, there's things that God has for you in your life right now. There's, there's more, right? And uh, some of you are like, well, I don't believe this stuff. This is crazy. You know, I'm a faith person. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of scripture here, guys. Jesus came to mend the brokenhearted, right? Heal the brokenhearted. Right? Your soul. So here's what I want you to do. I just want you to bow your head this morning. And, and again, there's, there, this is what you, you guys got to spend time with the Lord. And uh, don't be afraid of this. They'll go, oh, no, I'll never open that up. No, no, open it up to the right person, to the Lord. <laughs> right? I ain't open up that can of worms. Well, no, open it up to the Lord. I mean, if the worms are stinky and they've been around for a long time, I mean, God can handle your worms. Right? You don't want that in you. You want some healing. I want some healing, right? So right now, this is what I want you to do. Just close your eyes. Just start strumming that guitar, Jim. Just start whatever you feel in your heart to pray. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name. Bless your name, oh God. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. We bless your name. We bless your name. You are God. You are Lord. You're everything. We thank you, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for the word. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for ministering to us in such a wonderful level this morning. Father God, Lord, whatever's of you, let it stick in their heart. If I, if I was just saying things, Lord, let them totally forget it. But Father, if it's whatever's of you, let it stick in their spirit, Lord. And Father, we just choose right now. We just choose. As your word says, sanctified, holy, 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 complete, entire, perfect, spirit, soul, and body. Your word says the healing of the soul, the engrafted word heals it. So, Lord, we received it. And just say this together and say, Lord, if there's anything that I'm suppressing, <laughs> that I keep pushing down, like that beach ball that keeps erupting and not a good time, <laughs> Lord, show me. Because whatever, whatever you tell me to do, Lord, I'll do it. I'll do you tell me to leave my isolation, get out of my cave, out of my cave. Go, my go my way, start anointing people, start, start, being, a start being a blessing, start mentoring somebody like Elisha, I'll do it. And I just thank you, Lord, for hearing my heart, for restoring my soul. And I just thank you, Father, your word promises that I'll prosper and I'll be in health even as my soul prospers. And I declare that my soul is prospering in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo, what a nice way to end church. Go home. Put on your happy face. Go on. Glory to God. God bless you guys. We'll see you around.